Well, this is the second video of today. I am going to cover something a little bit different just to change the pace. It has to do with tower defense and we're going to continue using the example that we have been using before. If you haven't checked those videos, please check on my Twitch channel or my YouTube channel. And you're going to be able to see that, uh, the, well, those videos and what I've been talking about. Last video, uh, if you saw it, oops. Uh, basically I was taking the tower defense and I was creating some uh, functions to complement the system that we have been creating for different waves on the crypts. Now I had a question that I, that I thought that was quite interesting and I am just going to partially answer it. I am not going to put everything there but, uh, but at least it's going to be quite interesting. And that question had to do like how to add animations to the creeps of our tower defense, and especially to use Rojo Hound's um, system. So I'm going to show you that one, so you can look in the Zero uh, uh, forums for sprite movement a direction travels, and you're going to see this post by Rojo Hound and or R zero J zero Hound. I don't know what is the correct pronunciation and um, the thing is that you can download the uh, file and check how it goes and I'm going to show you exactly how that is so he was working with a Nate uh, direction sprite and uh, one of the cool things is that you could move a little animation in a well a little character in a direction and you can tell that it's changing the animation that you were going to be using there. Okay, so that's that's quite cool, and that's awesome. So now uh, I had uh, well to test it first, and it's really awesome, especially because not only you just have one animation here, well, or one sprite, but also with one event is going to be able to cover everything. So I wanted to add this to our current uh, project and make it look similarly. Also, since I didn't have any, any animation that work like this one, I used the same. Okay, I copied the images that, I, that were there, I know that they are not mine, mm -hmm. and they are different from the triangles that, that we have been using. I have to figure out uh, a better animation to use there, something that I know for sure that is Creative Commons, and since this is for basically educational purposes to show you how it works, I'm using the same. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that I did was to open this and check the animations that you see that we have eight animations here from 0 to 7 and all of them have two frames so it was a little bit of a pain but I saved all image by image frame by frame of out of all the out of all the uh, seven animation well eight animations that we have here to be able to use them in my own in my own project uh, it is a little bit of a pain because uh, and I guess if it was any other option I could have just copied this sprite in my project but since I already have so many things in my project, I thought that it was easier just to copy the images and do not deal with the uh, changes in the uh, logic. So now, uh, the original, if you remember, the original enemy was this one called Seeker. And we have three animations. One for, well, default, the normal enemy, then boss and boss two. So this is something that I actually had to, to address and, and basically change. So let's see how I, I did it in the other project in my example. The first thing is that I just left the default to be uh, a copy of one of these animations. And after that I recreated all these animations that you had here and added in each case the two frames that you have been having here and also make them to work as a loop. So if you don't know how to do that basically you just have to say uh, right click here on the animations uh, area, add animation, you put whatever name, so in this case I'm saying whatever, and then you can add loading an image from a file. So if I'm not mistaken, I have them here on walk. And you see here, so um, those are, are perfect. And I copied them directly from uh, Rojo Hound's uh, example. I don't know where he took them from, so 
uh, that's why I'm hesitant to keep using this I have to I guess for a couple of videos I can leave it like that while I create a, an animation that works like this and that it has eight directions like this one but uh, I better make certain that that is something that I can use uh, I left this boss and boss too just because well it was less trouble to do so but uh, perhaps you can try to recreate also eight animations for each one of the bosses and perhaps that, that that's better <laughs> well, maybe I should do a video around that anyway so uh, so that's first step I'm not going to show you any more about this because it, it took me quite some time and it's annoying uh, after that what do you have to do basically uh, recreate the event that we had here on Rojo Hound's example. So in this case, uh, he was talking about a direction is moving. If we're talking about a tower defense, we have to do a pathfinding platform. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to recreate it just to show you how to do it. I'm going to say seeker is moving along path. And then you have exactly the same thing, right? So that covers the a direction is moving so the only thing that we want to know if it is moving after that I literally copied this from this project until this other project the only difference is that this one has to be renamed as seeker so I think uh, and also is going to give me problems because uh, the seeker does not have a direction so I'm just going to to go ahead and do it so I copy from pieces so, so I'm going to say seeker animation set animation to walk and now I'm going to copy the rest and modify the part that I need so I'm going to say this so now seeker does not have a direction so that's why we see a little underline here that is an error so I'm just going to say I'm going to delete this then I'm going to say pathfinding then uh, move moving angle and then the rest of the form formula is exactly the same and that formula is basically just calculating calculating which one of the animations you want so in this case it's going to say that if it's walk 0 walk 1 walk 2 walk 7 so you don't have to modify that just to modify this part just to get the right angle and then it's going to work now I'm going to show you something else that I did because, and I'm going to show you the effect of not doing it and doing it and then we're going to see how it affects our our game so well um, I'm going to show you what is the uh, finished version so let's say it is and then you can tell that our, our little animations here are working okay they turn and all that you see that there are different colors here I'm going to show you that in a second this is not something that is really that important is that just I needed that to be able to differentiate enemies that are normal and the different two different kind of bosses that you see here so you see that one is sepia the other one is gray and the other one is colored so have it here so now originally how we had this secret this enemy this rotate object property on the properties of pathfinding was set to yes uh, yes there now I'm going to show you how it looks and of course you're going to agree with me that it's better to to do it how I did it you see so it uh, the pathfinding has a, a moving angle and uh, you can tell that it, that is well moving everything at the same time that is moving around so well it has kind of like an interesting effect but for the animations that we that we have it's better just to go here and say no then we go back to this and I think it works much better now the latest uh, changes that I made have to do with the uh, collision polygon for the for the animation so I just went here to one where the default one actually and I made a collision polygon just around the the base of the of the little boy that we have here and then you just can say 
uh, apply to all animations. So, uh, yes, I'm sure that I want, and then all of them are going to just cover that area, and then that's why you see that it's not taken into account. For example, here, I guess. Well, I guess I, I could walk better. Well, you can adjust it. Now, the last thing that I added, and this is not something important for your game, is just to explain why it looks like this, is that I added a couple of effects to my sprite. So you can go here, effects, and I added grayscale and sepia. And then for the three different kinds of enemies that we have, I was just adding playing a little bit with the sepia scale and the gray scale. So in the case of the second kind of, uh, well, the first kind of boss, I was saying that no gray scale, no sepia, so that's why it's colored. And in the other two cases, I was leaving the sepia or the gray scale on just to be able to differentiate them. But uh, I guess that if you have animations that are particular to every monster, you can just leave them there. I just need it quickly to be able to differentiate, otherwise they all have the same animation and that's that's kind of hard to know which is which. So I just left it like that and, and, and I think it works okay. So this is a cool way to to make your enemies uh, well look like this, but it really depends on the kind of enemies that you're going to have. Uh, most of the time I just had like really simple enemies that were like blobs or cubes and all that just to avoid this problem that we have here that is to make them look that they are walking correctly. Um, the next part of the question has to do with uh, health bars. That uh, This viewer wants to have some health bars on each one of the enemies and to just modify them uh, accordingly, like each one of them. So that's something that I'm going to dedicate another video just for that. But I, but I think so far, uh, well, I'm answering a good portion of the a good portion of the of the question and and if not well it's a cool effect uh, that we have here and I think uh, it would be great to to see this on um, on the following well the finished game I just have to figure out like like I said uh, a better animation to use here on oh look this one in the other in the other level I haven't change that animation. What is that flickering that I see from time to time? Ah, okay, because I'm creating one of the uh, bosses and the size is much bigger. Okay, I, I understand what I'm doing. Okay, perfect. Uh, perhaps for next time I'm going to add then the health bars and uh, I am going to answer the better, like, the best way that we can. So where is the animation over here? Well, it doesn't really matter, I'm just going to concentrate on level 1. Um, so I hope that you're liking so far the series with uh, Tower Defense. Uh, it's quite advanced so far, but I still have many other things that I have experimented with my own games with other templates. Uh, and I'm going to, well, revisit them, remember what I did, and then try to recreate that on a video. Which is a little bit more complicated than you would think. In any case, thank you.